Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Um, in the upcoming half past hour, we would like to present you the most frequently answered questions by the Dubai support of the last month. Um, first, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Jasmin Hartung. I work at Luba Software in the Department of Marketing and Public Relations, and I take care of all kind of sorts of things there. Today, I'm accompanied by my two colleagues, Andreas Hörert and Markus Baumgärtel, who can now introduce themselves. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the Luba Software Company. For instance, the Luba website, the German and English webinars, and yeah, I will be the presenter today. Hello, my name is Markus Baumgartel. I'm responsible for customer support and frequently asked questions on our website. And today I will help my colleagues to answer your questions during this webinar. Okay. Thank you so much for the introduction. Now we can turn off the webcam so the attendees can see the whole screen. So. Before we start, I'd like to tell you that during this webinar, you can ask us questions. You can do so by using this control panel on the right side of your screen, where you can find here a tab where you can ask questions. We will try to answer them during the webinar. If we, for some reason, have too many questions and can't answer them right now, we will send you an email where we will answer them. And if you'd just like to watch the webinar for now and ask us a question after, you can send those to info at Luba and then you will receive an answer shortly. So now I will hand the screen over to Andreas. Okay, then we start with the first model and the first question. The first question is the display of member moments due to a continuously distributed load is wrong. The moment uh, distribution should not be triangular. How can I improve this? Now you can see on the left side here, the moment dis distribution of the short member shows a triangular representation. A representation for a distributed load and yeah, that's wrong I, that display is wrong the longer member is 10 meters long yeah and the shorter member uh, two meters long and by default the longest member is divided in 10 parts yeah, means each part is one meter long and the same is then for the short member two parts of one meter and that's the reason <clears throat> why the display is triangular how can we improve that yeah, uh, yeah first solution would be to divide the longest member or increase yeah, or the second possibility is to increase the value for the member divisions in the mesh settings. The mesh settings can be found under calculate and then mesh settings or in the menu then it is that button here and then mesh settings. Okay and for the member where is the default setting number of divisions for result diagrams 10 and if I increase that for example to 50 and press OK and apply and calculate all again then you can see a curve for the moment yeah and that display is correct yeah that would what uh, that was the solution Okay, then we turn to the next question. Oh, I, my task with just a moment. I have to change the setting. Okay, so then next model and next question. The next question is how can I set a contact condition between two solids? Yeah, in earlier webinars uh, we presented also or we showed 
uh, as special objects, the nodal release and the line releases. And uh, in this webinar, I would like to introduce the surface release. Yeah, and it's also uh, uh, possible to create surface releases. And I would like to show that in that example. And this example shows a grommet and uh, yeah, through which is a bolt put on you know, that place. And the contact conditions here in this area should be uh, uh, yeah, defined that the surface under tension uh, is, can detach uh, from each other. So yeah, if, if I load the bolt here, as we defined, it should be released on that edge here. So how to do that? Well, before I do that, I would like to introduce the solids here. On the left side, you can see the navigator data and then you can see the solids, that ring here, this part and so on. And the solid four, six and eight yeah, should be released from the ring here. Okay. So then I create a new surface release on the left side. I do a right click and then new surface release. At first, uh, I assign the surface. I switch to the transparent model. So, and that's the surface between the two solids. Okay. Then next, uh, the release type should be defined. I specify a small spring for the X and Y direction yeah, to avoid no numerical problems and that the bolt can be yeah, slipped out uh, from the hole. So in, in the set direction, yeah, per perpendicular to the surface, I define a nonlinearity fixed in negative P set. Okay, that's all. So, and then I yeah, select the solids. So, I move it a little bit. Okay, so then number six, number four, and here, I switch to the wireframe model. Uh, one is not correct. Where are two uh, solids who has the same uh, center, uh, eight and one, I select eight. Okay, and now I've got four, six and eight. It's also possible to yeah, define it directly here, four comma six comma eight. Okay, that's all. I apply that with OK, and after clicking OK, uh, a note is shown informing about some missing entries, which can be correctly uh, automatically. So, and then I select action two. Uh, there are there are some surfaces that must be released okay so and then all should be fixed and i can calculate all so that takes some seconds and after the calculation we can see that the solids are detached from each other. So I move or I display in minus Y direction and can also do an animation. 
and you can see that the bolt is released uh, from the ring. We can also check the results for the solid. So solid sigma x yeah, in that direction here. You can see there are only compression on that side and also on that side and no tension. Yeah? And yeah, because the bolt is yeah, released uh, from the ring. Okay, that would yeah should be all to that question. I turn back to the first model. And the next question is, unfortunately, I'm not able to move my model by the mouse. Also shifting a node to another grid point does not work anymore. How can reactivate it? Okay, what I mean uh, is, that I can can't move or, or copy also by drag and drop, and the reason is, or you can reactivate it by you know, a right click and then activate the drag and drop function again. Now well, maybe that was by an accident activated, so and or deactivated and now we activate it again, and then I can move the uh, yeah. Or the node, I move the node, for example, or I can copy that by drag and drop, and so on. Okay, that should be all to that question. We work in with that model for the next question. And next question is how can I change a cross section taken from the library concerning its dimensions to a specific value? So let's create a new section. I yeah, go in the uh, navigator data for the section and then I select new section. And I can, for example, choose a section IPE, IPE, for example, 300. Okay. So, and at the moment, it, the section type is standardized steel. And if I want to modify yeah, the thickness of the web or flange or you know, the height or maybe you have got an older cross section that is not standardized uh, anymore or you have got a rusting on, on for the web or for, for the lower flange and you want would like to modify the cross section then you have to change the section type to parametric thin walled so and then you can go to the next dialog and change the dimensions. For example, yeah, because of rusting, you've got a, a web only from with a thickness of five millimeters, or you okay, it was changed, or you have got a rusting of two millimeters. On the lower flange, we uh, okay. If you uh, or, or you have got it on, on the upper and lower flange, then you can change it here, or you can also change the the type. If you have got uh, different flanges, for example, you can select such a uh, yeah such a single symmetric section. Yeah. yeah and if you want to yeah, um, I've got a rusting on the uh, upper and lower side, for example, of two millimeters. Then I would like to select 8.7. And then I have uh, yeah, to modify the 300 to 296. Okay. So, yeah, that's one possibility 
And the other possibility, possibility of course, is to use our section, yeah, the single or the standalone program, and then you can uh, use that R section, cross section, uh, yeah, in the RFM or RSTAP model. Okay, so then we turn to the next model. And the next question, and the next question is, I would like to hide my surface results for a certain area around the zero value. Is there any elegant solution for this in uh, RFM6? Now, if uh, only individual areas in a model are decisive for the design, the evaluation based on isobands may quickly become confusing. And you can avoid that with that function here in the navigator results and then type of display isobands and you can check the gray zones. So and yeah, below the item you can select a value between 0.1% and 50%. Uh, person to be uh, to be covered by the degree area, but it's only 0.1 percent, one per mil, one percent, and so on. Yeah, I think a good display uh, solution. Okay, then. We turn to the next question and the next model. And the next question is, how can I connect as fast as possible a beam to another beam by a thin plate using the steel joints add-on? Yeah, that's quite easy. First, I have to activate the steel design add-on and the base data. So, yeah, left above, left have got the base data, and yeah, it's necessary to select or to activate the steel joints add on. And then under standards two, you have to yeah, choose the standard and the national annex. I leave the standard national annex of the Eurocode three. Okay, so and then the types for steel joints is activated and I can create a new joint by right click, new steel joint. So and in the main table, you can define the node to be designed. So, okay, now all members or all the three members are selected now. Now we need all the members and I can now select the next step. I have to now define the supported ends. I define as supported ends the end of member two and member three. And member two and member three are continuous members. So that should be all. You can also define the material. I used the yeah, material that is already uh, defined in RFM6 and also the section. So, and then in the components tab, we uh, find all specific uh, yeah, specification for the joint type. Uh, and with the insert uh, components from library button, we can choose from various pre-fabricated uh, categories. Now uh, we've got the rigid connections here, the pinned, the truss and the bracing. Okay, we would like to use a 
pinned connection and you can see the beam to beam connections, beam to column, beam to continuous beam, column to beam and cross joint. We select the category beam to beam. Now we now won't uh, use the cleat, but the fin plate, also short end plate is available. So and if I apply the template, you can see a preview here. Okay, that looks quite good. And I can apply that with okay. So then now we can see also the preview here. And we can define the yeah, single parameters here. Member one is the connected member, then the reference member, or well, reference members in that case are the member number two and number three. That's already correct. Then the corrected member offset is parallel, that's okay. And the connected member end offset should be yeah, more than 10 millimeters. I select 70 millimeters and you can see there's no, no collision or overlapping anymore. Material for the plate is okay. We use the same material, uh, the S335. Then the thickness is 10, okay. Alignment, connected member, that's also okay. The position, you can uh, change that from front to rear, uh, if you want. I leave it on the front and I enter here my minus 30 for the offsets, minus 30 and the uh, Overlap should be 90. Okay. So, okay. So that's okay. Then I have to select the diameter between M12 and M36. All diameters are available. I now select M12. And as the strength grade 4.6. Then you can define the you know, number of bolts, you know, how many rows, for example, three, two, and I select one row. And as the spacing 35 and the other spacing is calculated automatically. The same is for the spacing vertically. I select 25 and the rest is calculated automatically as well. Yeah, then you can uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you use the, or consider the, that the bolt and the, the shear plane is in treat. I deactivated in that case. And for the weld, I yeah, leave the three millimeters weld. Okay, then you can go to the plausibility check if all is okay. Well, it's all okay now, no error is found. And I can leave the dialog. And then under in the table, I can. Yeah, turn to the steel joint design. I can, for example, uh, double click on the ultimate limit state uh, design situation that I can uh, check if the steel joints add on is activated. That's the case. And that, yeah, it's, that's the case. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That should be all. Now, only one node objects. Uh, to design and I can run the calculation.
that should take a short moment. So in, uh, yeah, in the background, there's a sub model model created. Yeah, with uh, and the members are then uh, surfaces in the area of the of the connection. Yeah, I, I can show that later. This the sub model model, and yeah, that's why the calculation yeah, takes some time, but I think it's not too long. Okay. You can see the you know, design ratios in the table. And if I, for example, double click on that line here, or I can uh, go to that button here, design check details, you know, there are two possibilities. Then I can see the design details with the single design checks. Here on the right side, you can see the formulas or equations from the from the standard, yeah, and you can see uh, from which standard and which tab or, or, or which part the formula is. That's the design for the fasteners. That's for the plate, and that's the design for the weld. Okay. So, and when uh, clicking here left above the colored, uh, colored uh, joint icon, you can also display the results of the joint model. Now you can deactivate some parts if you only want to see the balls and so on. And if you click on the button uh, le on, the, on the left side, on, on at the top and uh, at the bottom, you can save a steel joint model. Now, I already did that, and would like to show you that model. So, and that's the detailed model yeah, with all the results. I disable the results that you can see the model and you can see yeah, the different objects, for example, surface contacts, rigid links for the welds and so on. Yeah, And that's the model from the background. Uh, or that's calculated in the background, and you can see the results in the original model. And that, that will I be turned back to the original model. Just a moment. Okay. Okay, yeah, that should be all from my side. Yeah, and I hand over the screen to Yasmin. Thank you, Andreas. I will take over again. So before we come to the end of our webinar, I would like to point out to you that anytime you can book a free online appointment with our sales team, there you can get valuable insights from one of our experts, like during product demonstrations, or you can get offers for our different programs and add-ons. So lastly, I will like to show you where you can find um, the recording of this webinar on our website and also our upcoming webinars. For that, you go to our website, luval.com. You go to news and events, mm -hmm. events, webinars. Now here you can see a list with, for example, our next webinar next week with the building model add-on. And here you can find today's webinar. Tomorrow, during the day, the recording will appear around here. Down here, you can also find the presentation slides. And down here, you can find the used models. So, I would like to thank Andreas for the presentation, uh, Markus for answering the questions, and I would also like 
to thank every attendee for coming here today and listening to us. And I will hope to meet you next week or in another webinar again. Um, I would like to point out that after we end the webinar, there will be a short survey um, where we ask a few questions to make sure that the quality of our webinars is on a high standard. Um, and I would like to point out that uh, during the process of um, the survey, the number one is the lowest number and the number five is the highest number. So I would like to uh, wish you a good rest of the week and thank you for attending. Goodbye.